So today I wanted to show you the mushroom kit that I got from uh, the Tomball Farmer's Market today. Um, at the Tomball Farmer's Market, there is a mushroom vendor there that we buy lion's mane mushrooms from. These are my um, son's favorite to cook with. These are actually quite good for you too. Um, they look like a lion's mane. They're very furry kind of looking and they have great nutritional and medicinal values. Um, uh, the lion's mane mushroom is not the easiest mushroom to grow, but whenever you have a kit, it makes it super easy for you because they've already done all the hard work. Um, you can learn more about the mushroom kits that they sell at Tomball Farmer's Market at LoneStarMushroom.com. Um, and basically it has a QR code on it and um, you scan it and it takes you to a YouTube page, their YouTube page. Um, and all you need to do is cut it on the line pretty sharp knife and then uh, four times a day you mist it with a little water and I'm using water from my Berkey they say you could use regular tap water but like I don't trust that so just spray this four times a day and leave it in a place um, in a pan or something like that um, and then within a, a week or so um, we should see mushrooms growing actually I already see some fungi growing down here in the bottom so I know that it's already active and everything and it's best if you do this right away um they don't want you to like have it sitting around for like weeks at a time before you like start it up so uh, we will be checking back in on this and hopefully we'll have some mushrooms um growing in our kitchen and this is just another example of something that you can grow in your house during the winter that is nutritious and fun and um something to tide you over during winter so today we are going to be starting some seeds indoors and um, this is the first week in February and um, that is when I typically like to start seeds indoors, um, uh, specifically the longer lead time ones like the peppers and the tomatoes and everything. But I also like to start some things that I could put out in the garden right now but just won't because we're still experiencing freezes like even tonight it's going to be down to 28. Um, and the last expected frost in my zip code is the middle of March. So we still have a month and a half, basically, or a, a month and a week until all the frosts are expected to be gone. Um, so I don't want to put anything out until then, just so that I know that I have healthy, strong plants that, you know, will be producing food by April Fool's Day. So, um, so that's why I like to get started a little earlier. Some things have a really long lead time, like cabbage and um, bell peppers and those kinds of things. Um, so those you'd want to start early anyways. And one of the ways that I start is, I already talked about the soil. I like a really good expensive soil. And this is the Fox, Fox Farms. Fox Farms Light Warrior, and it is their seed starter mix. It's very light, it's very fluffy. And basically what you do is you just kind of get started by making mud pies. And so put some soil, and I just work like one tray's worth of soil at a time because I don't want to be wasting any soil or water or seeds or anything. So I just work in small batches, which is totally fine also work this in um, the extra trays. Um, I've done it like that before too. And you're just gonna put a little bit of water in it. You don't want it to be like a sponge where you can wring it out and you can wring water out. You just want it to be able to stick together. So just pour a little water at a time, stir it up, and then pour a little bit more water in. Remember, we're not trying to make a soup. We're just trying to make like a, like a thick batter, like a biscuit dough kind of consistency. And you see how light and fluffy this, the soil is. It's definitely not compact. It doesn't have a lot of sticks or um, clay or anything in it. It's got a lot of perlite. It's really quite lovely, actually. Let me show you a close up what it looks like. Without making a mess. Look at all that. That's really beautiful soil. And this is only one of the, one of the only occasions where you get to get messy 
and that's one of the things that I love about farming is I like to get my country feet dirty and my country hands dirty. Makes me feel like I was productive today. And that's about the right consistency. It's able to stay together, but we can still squeeze out quite a bit out of it and that will all go to the bottom. So that's what I want to put in my trays. So take this off. Just prop it up so you can see it. And then I'm just gonna take this, and I'm gonna start putting it in the trays. And I'm not packing it in. I want it to be light and fluffy. I don't want it to be like heavy and compact so that those roots really have a chance to establish themselves. A lot of this will settle just as things are growing in it, but I want to be able to see the tops of these cells. So I'm just kind of putting the soil on top of it and then scraping it off the top so I can see the edges of the cells. And I know to some of you this might seem super simple, but to somebody who's grown up in the city and has never planted something from a seed, this might be like revolutionary knowledge. And I didn't know this whenever I started many years ago on an organic farm and I had to learn all this stuff and I'm kind of relearning it now. I have more money than I did when I lived on the organic farm and I have more knowledge and I also have more time, more free time. So I'm able to invest my time and my money and my effort and my education into what I do with my plants now. Because the goal for me and my family is to replace some of what we get at the grocery store, not all, but a good portion of it, from our garden. And I'll tell you, it's always a very happy day when I can look down at my dinner plate or my lunch plate or my breakfast plate and say, you know, 90, 100% of the food that's on this plate came from here. You know, that's always a really good feeling. And it's also very convenient, especially now. I was just at HEB earlier and they did not, they barely had any chicken. And I don't need to buy chicken, but I was surprised at how little chicken they had on their shelves for Saturday. All right. So I'm gonna finish up this tray and I'm gonna put you guys on double speed so that you can see what I'm doing. So on the back here, it says sprouts in 7 to 14 days. So we know if it doesn't sprout within 14 days that that's that it didn't germinate. Ideal temperature 75 to 95, and that is why we're putting it on the heat mat and the peppers and the tomatoes in the same tray so they can sit on the heat mat together. Seed depth of 1 eighth of an inch. And this is something that I'm not so great at, but I can always get better. Um, you can use your finger, you can use a ruler. They have things called dibs and pokers and all kinds of things, but really all you need is just something like a pen or a Sharpie. And you just need to put a slight impression in each one of them. And remember, we're not trying to like pack all this down or anything. Um, you know, it's not like if you go, you know, a, a ninth of an inch or, or you know half an inch or something like that like you're gonna ruin these but it does that's what it's suggesting that that you do so i'm just using the end of this to create a little divid 
in the middle of each one of these cells, that's about one eighth of an inch. And it should be the same for all the tomatoes and all the peppers, but I will check the packaging as I go just to make sure. So always check that seed depth. But I just like to prep the tray so that I'm not having to pick it up and put it down, you know, every five seconds to get it done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep track of what I'm doing by um, using seed, uh, seed markers. And I get these off of Amazon as well. Um, I've tried all different kinds of things and you are welcome to try different kinds of things. It, it does bother me that, um, that that's not something that I can use again. But with all the different varieties that I try, it's really important that I have been listed out um, so that I know which ones were successful and what's, which ones weren't. So on this, I'm just dropping two seeds into each one of these holes. And I'm just going to make one line of Amish paste. Um, I think it's probably okay to put just one seed in. And you're not definitely not going to kill anything if you, put, if you put more than two seeds in. But I just find I have better germination with whenever I do two seeds. And then I'm not wasting that space. So I could potentially have eight Amish paste plants, but most likely I'm only gonna have one, two, three, four, about four or five. Um, and then I'm gonna put the rest of the seeds back into the package. And then I'm gonna make my little marker. Now on my marker, what I'm gonna put is I'm gonna put the, that it's a tomato. I usually just put Tom up here at the top. And then I'm gonna put the variety, which is Amish paste. And then on the back of it, I'm gonna put today's date. And the reason why I'm doing that is because these have a longer time that they need to grow the tomatoes and the bell peppers. There are going to be things that I start later than this, and it's important for me to know the date so that I could check to see if I got good germination or not. So that I know in 14 days if those if those haven't sprouted that, that they just didn't work. So again, I'm writing Tom at the top because that's my marker for tomato. And then I'm putting Amish paste. And then today's date is February 5th, so 2522 on the back. And I find that these markers do not fade. And then the date on the back. And I'm putting that right here, and that represents this entire row of cells. And then I'm gonna just do what the next, the next, the next. So I did Amish paste and Hungarian heart. What's next? And Hungarian heart says one in two. So, oops, I accidentally got more than two seeds in that one. But like I said, no big deal. And then today's date, two, five, two, two. And then I just keep on going. Not doing Rebecca Allen this year because they weren't good. Woods Famous was not good. Kellogg's, my absolute favorite. This one does so well for me. And I also save seeds too, but I'm gonna use up all the seeds because these are the older seeds. Um, some people see something like sell by date on their plants, and, or I mean on their seeds, and they think that maybe their seeds have expired, and that's not really what it means. It's just a suggested day that they recommend it being sold, those seeds being sold by. They don't expire. In fact, some seeds can germinate hundreds of years later. They've re-germinated seeds from ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, um, from pioneer days. 
Seeds are incredibly resilient. So don't throw out your seeds. If you have seeds that you don't want, you could always donate them to your local library. A lot of local libraries have seed um, libraries um, where people can donate and, um, and, and take seeds. What was that? That was Kellogg's. And then after I'm done doing all of the seeds, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and I'm just kind of pushing some dirt over the top. I'm not pressing down. I'm not creating any kind of pressure or anything. I'm just covering it up with my fingertip. And that's because you want the seed to be surrounded and then you're going to take some water and you're going to water just, I water just kind of like along the edge so that it could be watered from the bottom up. So I just create a little bit of space. I just pour some water in the bottom. And I will just check that water level like once a day to make sure that there's water in there and it's not drying out, especially why it's on the heat map.
so it is the next day um i didn't want to bore you guys with all the things that i was planting but i wanted to show you the final setup and go over all the things that i had planted so um it's the next day in the evening you can see all of the um, condensation that's built up in the in in the dome um this is the only one that's on a heat mat right now um but still the other ones still have a good amount of water built up inside of the dome so i didn't even have to water them today and really nothing's going to happen with these for at least four to seven days um so i'm just going to leave them alone because it's best that you know i just leave them be now um I have to find my timer to get it set up, but I normally put the, this on a timer to where um, it goes for 12 hours. I've seen people do sprouts anywhere from 12 to 18 hours. Um, this is set up in our dining living area and this pink light is very harsh to the eyes. So I start it really early because I'm an early riser. So I might run it from like 5.30 to 5.30 or 6.30 to 6.30. Today I'm running it from 6.30 to 6.30. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And then I will check it every day to make sure that there's plenty of moisture in here. And I, uh, and if it doesn't have enough moisture, then I'll bottom water it by watering it between the tray and the, um, and the cells um, so that they can, it can receive its water from, from the bottom up. And I will also check to make sure that it's getting enough light. Once I start seeing sprouts on the majority of the things in the tray, then I will remove these, um, these trays. So just as a, some examples of some things that we planted, Hungarian heart tomato, Amish paste tomato, uh, Kellogg's breakfast, black creme, um, Aunt Molly's uh, cherry tomato, uh, Cherokee purple, black crim, Korean long, white tomasol, carbon, and then we did the black strawberry um, uh, cherry tomato, which is a new one for this year for me. Um, we also did Tobago peppers. Um, we did goddess peppers, lilac peppers, orange jalapenos, and sesame teas peppers, which is a sweet pepper. And then we did a bunch of cucumbers, which is the Parisian, the Boston, uh, the Mexican sour gher gherkin, um, some asters, echinacea, and a couple different kinds, three different kinds of basil. Um, and here we have bee balm, orange thyme, majorum, regular thyme, green sage, chamomile. Chamomile is my absolute favorite herb that I grow in the garden. If you've never had fresh chamomile, it is a game changer. Um, valerian, cilantro, both slow bolting and regular. And then there's some more in the back there. I just don't want to disturb it too much. Um, and then in this tray, we have broccoli rob, blue kale, nero kale, curled kale, merlot lettuce, tom thumb lettuce, may queen, solar, gustavs, and arugula. And then I think there's some more in the back. So that is our first set of seedlings that we're doing. These are the early set. This is so we can have food April 1st. And today is the 6th of February, I believe. Yes, the 6th of February. So we should have food April 1st by, by planting these yesterday. And um, I will keep you up to date. I'll try to take some extra pictures between um, between everything that we're doing um, on, on a weekly basis filming for you, just so you can keep up with it. And of course, you'll see it whenever I start hardening it off, which is me taking it outside. Mm -hmm.